Hima from the Mahima Mindset asked me what my biggest breakthrough was in being at the retreat. So I figure, you know, I might, you know, I always like to deep dive with her because she's like, okay, like give me the goods, right? Bahamas, yes, oh my gosh. And like we went to Nassau, I think it's Nassau, Nassau, uh, gorgeous. We went to Villas. So it's basically like you got your, your own private island. The water is like a teal blue, crystal clear, white sand beaches, palm trees all around. I just felt like I was, I was like, how, how did I end up here? The crazy thing is I actually had that on my vision board, that exact location. And when I originally signed up for the retreat with Lisa Nichols back at her event before 2020 pandemic, so it got pushed back and pushed back uh, three times. And finally, third time's a charm and we made it happen. Um, but they were scheduled for Jamaica. So, you know, I had the Bahamas, this Palm K Villas. I, I mean, I don't even know exactly if it was Palm K Villas, but it looked like it. So... Um, yeah, I had this exact place on my vision board, the exact scenery at least. And then that's where we go. It got changed because she moved out there, fell in love and moved out there. And that's where we stayed. So I want to recap because it was so powerful. And actually I actually had another call um, with some of my girls. Started off as a networking call and they were spiritual entrepreneurs just like me. So we talked about Course in Miracles and then now we just do check-ins, talk spirituality and business. And we're going to actually do our own retreat coming up soon. So to be announced in the future. And we're going to the Happiness Summit in March in Miami. I think, yeah, Miami. <laughs> That's exciting. Okay, so, ah, thanks for being here, y'all. Let me know where you're calling from. Let me know who's here. Um, okay, so I was just, I'm a little bit late. I was gonna try to get on here at 6.30 and then we have like a flea situation at my house with the animals, so. <laughs> I'm like spraying, spraying and vacuuming and doing all the things. Um, so anyways. I have my notebook because I was like, I really want to share my learnings. It was so powerful. So when I was talking to my friends in our, you know, our meeting this morning, I was telling them one of the biggest things that I got was really, I feel like I don't need to overextend myself. I feel like I'm enough as I am. And I thought I felt that before, but now it's such a really big, like weight off my shoulders and a sense of relief where I don't feel like I need to prove myself. I don't feel like I need to go the extra mile for anything. Like just as I am is enough. And I feel that very deeply. So my friend, when I said that to her, she was like, I'm going to write that down because a lot of times we feel like we need to do more because we don't think we're enough. And I really feel enough just as I am. So that was a big breakthrough. I don't need to do, I don't need to like prove anything. Um, so that was a good one. Okay. So I'm going to talk about some of the exercises because they were powerful um, and that we did. So the first thing, so there's five days, even on day zero, I was, she had me crying about something we were doing. I didn't take notes on day zero. I didn't think we were going to, I should have known, but I didn't take notes. Um, a little bit in my phone, but I didn't go over that right now. So I'll do, I'll probably deep dive into some of these topics because it was super deep. Um, so the first one, it was saying we get to re-choose our identity. So this was on day one. Um, you know, and a lot of times as women, so it was the dynamic women's retreat. So it was a lot of women there and we, we like cook, we clean, we are always, you know, like we're going to work, we're doing the business. If you have kids, you're taking care of the kids. And so what happens is like, we take on this role, like the super woman. And then what she was saying is we get to re-choose our identity. So what she did, uh, what Lisa Nichols did was when she went to the Bahamas, she was trying to recreate her whole identity. Like if I'm going to do life, how I want to do it. And um, but then she got there and she just assumed the roles and, you know, the paradigm, living in the same paradigm she was always in. And she started yeah, doing the cooking, the cleaning. the And she's like, you know, this is not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be this. I wanted to, you know, have more freedom and space to just do what I wanted to do, to pursue the business, to grow the business and, you know, just spend time. So then she, you know, she told her partner, like, I'm sorry that I, you know, gave out this impression that I wanted to cook and clean all the time because that's not really what I wanted to do. So she's like, I get to re-choose. And then she said that people will, people will adjust, you know? So make the, um, oh, hey, Crystal, hey, Amber. <laughs> I love y'all. Um, so that was the biggest one was re-choose your identity. Who do you want to be? How do you want to act? Because you get to choose and people are going to adjust and act accordingly to how you show up and what you accept and what you expect from people. So really think about like, who do you want to be? Um, and yeah, what role do you want to step into? What identity do you want to embody? All right, so that was a big one. That was really good. And then you know what we did every morning? There's this lady, Tony Jones, who's so powerful. Her music, it's like a, uh, what is it? 
like a spoken word kind of poetry. I received that, yes. <laughs> uh, Colorado pound cake. Oh, I love it. I'm going to go stalk your page after this. Um, so it was so good. But Tony Jones, she has these meditations that it's like, ooh, the things she says, it's just like mind expanding and like heart opening. So we would listen to one of, she has a new album that just came out. So as we were starting our days, we do this meditation and listen to her song on her album. So Tony Jones, I would highly suggest looking at it. So then after, um, you know, we, we, you know, figured out the identity we want, the roles we want to assume in this lifetime. Uh, then we went into, I quit. So we wrote a resignation letter to ourselves. And so in the resignation letter, you're saying all the things you want to quit from, because then what happens is when you resign from one thing, one role, one way of being, um, then you can say yes to something else. That's, you know, so much more beautiful things that you really want to create and bring into your life. So I love this resignation letter. So I would, I would tell you to do it. You could resign from a role with somebody else. You could resign. I wrote mine to myself and, uh, some of the things I wanted to do. So one of them, I said, I want to resign from playing small. And then I realized, well, so we, what she does, which is so genius is we did our, um, we did our activity and then we got in groups and we shared because when you share your breakthrough, you're ingraining it into your cells at a DNA level. That's what she's always wants to like, do cellular transformation. So what we would do is we would share, I do the exercise and then share. So I was sharing like, Oh, I want to quit from playing small. And then this, this lady, joy, this beautiful lady, she was saying, I don't think you're playing small. Like, why are you telling yourself you're playing small? So I'm like, man, well, I'm comparing myself to Lisa Nichols over here. And it's like, she's been doing this for 20 years. So, you know, never, of course, comparison is a thief of all joy. But I didn't even know I was really doing that because what's playing small? You know, I'm, I'm out here going live weekly, sometimes daily, making an impact to thousands of people's lives. Um, I just want to be doing more, right? So, <laughs> yeah, so that was a big realization. I'm really not playing that small. But write a resignation letter to yourself um, on all the things you want to quit doing. Uh, so you can step into and then after we wrote our resignation letter we said what is it costing you to not resign from those behaviors activities lifestyle people whatever it is you need to resign from oh and then this one was good so we started talking about relationships and then with relationships we were talking about so all the ladies there at the retreat they're really high conscious ladies they're a lot spiritual you know the retreat wasn't cheap so you know they're all professionals in their own right a lot of doctors, lawyers, um, just entrepreneurs, pastors, uh, you know, just some big, you know, big personality, very smart women there. And so in their relationships, Lisa Nichols was saying that she had a, a 64 ounce. So I don't really have a huge cup here, but they so have a 64 ounce and then a 24 ounce cup. And so you might be that 64 ounce in maybe spirituality and your business. And then you have a partner or a friend and that they're a 64 ounce in say health or communication. And so not holding them to the same standard that you have when it comes to like your business and you want them to be doing business in this way, or you want to be talking to them at some high level in spirituality, but that's just not their gym. That's not what they do. So recognizing that in your partner and your friendships, um, and then, you know, also making sure you're hanging out with people that are going to expand your mind and accept your, your 64 ounce, not making you feel like, oh, I need to shrink down. So that was a really, really big exercise we did. I don't even know if I got deep into it, like she got deep into it, but it was super powerful. And I'm just going to kind of do a brief overview because they were already like eight minutes in. That's crazy. <laughs> and I'm only on day two, I think on day two. So I'm just going to kind of briefly go through my notes and share what I learned and some of the breakthroughs. Um, oh, um, yeah, this was good. So Danita, she's one of the co-hosts of the retreat as well. And she was saying that she has these cups that she wants her partner to fill. She has this travel cup, a beach cup, a celebration cup, and her partner is not big on celebrations at all. He doesn't really care about the glitz and the, the lights and the, the, all the things. And so she's like, I'm gonna get that from my girlfriends. And then he doesn't like the beach. But so, you know, so she just has her cups filled. So she has these cups that she should have in her life, but then she's not putting it all on. There's certain cups that he's going to fill because, you know, it's a relationship, but it was really powerful. So what are your cups? Like what is important to you? How does it need to get filled up? So I liked that one. Um, and then another one uh, was storytelling. So what stories are you telling yourself? Um, oh, no, well, I mean, yeah, what stories are you telling yourself is really important because 
how we talk to ourselves and how we think and how we our words are so powerful. So what she would do is she would have us repeat words that were so powerful to really get that ingrained in us. I was like, mm, that's good. Um, but we did this storytelling exercise where one person's in the middle and this other person's telling the story in all these different ways. One was the tragedy, one was the comedy, one was polyamorous. I think I said that right. <laughs> um, and then one was you're singing it. But you're, you're telling the, um, hey, new body moon. We're telling a story that's a pivotal moment in our lives that was like a tragic pivotal moment. So when you're, you're singing it in the song and you're singing it as a comedy, it's just your way of looking at how the story, you know, your way of telling it, the your different lenses of how you're seeing the story play out in your life. And so, okay. <laughs> that's my boyfriend. He's trying to be smart. <laughs> okay, so that was day, oh my God, that was only day one. So I'm just now getting to day two. Look at that. Oh my God. 10 minutes in and I only, okay, I'll go a little bit faster. But it, it really at the end, we just did more of these deep, like three hour exercises. So that's not going to be too much. But if you're interested, if anything like resonates with you, if you like this conversation, or if there's something you want me to dive deeper on, let me know because I have a lot of notes and this stuff was so deep and powerful. Um, so another thing I just highlighted was to not keep score, but keep track. Because if we're keeping score, then it's like tit for tack but you just kind of keep track. So um, you're just kind of collecting evidence of what works and what doesn't work, but you're not saying like, oh, well, because of this, now this. It's just kind of you know, a general keeping uniquely crafty. Crafty, hello, hello. Um, all right, so we're talking about a recap from my five-day Bahama retreat with the amazing Lisa Nichols in Nasu, Bahamas. Um, all right, so she was saying it's your time. Now's your time, so take your shot. And to walk in excellence in all the things you're doing. Ooh, and this was a good exercise. So she had mentioned, um, so all the people from The Secret, you know, they, they would get together. That was ahead of her mastermind group in the beginning. And so she had Jack Canfield. It was this exercise called the hurdle exercise. And so it was Jack Canfield, John Asseroff, and then John Gray from Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. She had them do this hurdle walk. And she created all these exercises herself because she didn't know she could you know, basically use other people's exercises. You know, as long as you give credit, a lot of times you can use their exercises where it's like, you know, your best possible self and like the perma model for positive psychology that I'm learning. Like we can use that. We just give credit to this is the exercise I learned, right? So she created all these brand new exercises that are so powerfully transformative. So one of the things I'm feeling just after being, coming back, you know, it's like my first day back, I just feel lighter. I feel not so like held down by just wait, just craziness, like just forgiving the past, you know, rewriting the story, choosing who I want to be, knowing what I need to quit from, knowing that I'm enough in all I'm doing and I don't have to try to prove, I don't need people's opinions. So that'll go into this um, exercise actually that I want to share we did. It was so powerful. It's a self-esteem exercise. And oh, well, okay, I was gonna talk about the hurdle first and then I'll go into the self-esteem. So the hurdle walk, so basically you're saying, what's your hurdle? Because you have a goal and then you're on the, the other side, you're here, there's a hurdle and then there's the goal. And so the hurdle walk is someone standing there. So in this case, John Asaroff, he was standing there and then Jack Canfield was trying to get to the other side where John Gray was. So there's the hurdle and then at the end is peace of mind. So Jack Canfield was saying his hurdle. So he was kind of being super sur surface level. And then they're like, that's not gonna move the hurdle. That's not gonna do it. Um, you know, go deeper, go deeper so you can get that peace of mind. And so he was saying that he, Jack Canfield, you know, chicken soup for the soul, he had all these insecurities that he wasn't good enough. And so then the hurdle moved and then he got that peace of mind. Because once you can bring awareness to what's holding you back and you can bring awareness to, yeah, like why are you feeling stuck? Then then the hurdles can move and you can show up with confidence and, and stand in your power. Hello, everyone. Where are you tuning in from? Thanks for coming in. Say hi, I'd love to say hi to you. All right, um, so this is the self-esteem exercise we did that I thought was super powerful. So what she did was she had um, a, a two liter soda um, and it was Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola back in the day, the coined phrase was Coca-Cola was the true happiness. And so she was like, okay, you have your happiness, right? I mean, of course, soda is toxic. Don't drink soda. <laughs> I'm like a huge advocate. Don't drink soda. But for this example, um, it was the true happiness. So she had the soda poured into this huge vase. And so she's like, this is the true happiness. And we had these characteristics of a child. So like some positive characteristics of a child. So 
You can let me know some or think of some. So basically, ooh, Crystal said it's the not needing to prove myself to others. Okay, that's exactly what my friend Alex was saying too when we were on our call today. Like, you know, like you, I don't need your approval. I don't need your acceptance. Your opinion doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, not that you don't care, but it's just it's not going to affect what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, you just be. You just get to be without trying too hard, without trying to prove anything. You just get to do you. So that was super powerful. Okay, so the self-esteem exercise. So she she poured the the you know the true happiness in the thing. So basically, you're filling it as we were saying it. She's filling it. We're talking about positive affirmations of a child. So it's like give me some. <laughs> uh, basically, yeah. So they're fearless. They you know they're trusting. They're loving. You know like po the positive characteristics. They're uh, you know, they forgive fast. So all these things. So she's just pouring in the Coke, pouring in the Coke. So you have all this. And this is your self-esteem, right? So because kids have pretty high self-esteem. Um, so, yeah, they, they're just go-getters, fearless, doing all these things. And then what happens is she put oil on it. So you see this big gap where there's the oil and the Coke. And that, in other people's opinions, is why we, you know, other people's opinions don't matter. Um, they're not going to affect you and what you're doing and your mission and your purpose. And so you have the oil and that's other people's opinion. That's, you know, what society tells you to do. Um, that's the oil that's that so your self-esteem basically the whole point was people say they have low self-esteem but it's not about low self-esteem it's just about you like letting all these like junk or guck muck oil whatever you want to say it put it on top of you and so and then she put some glitter and she's like this is the mask that we wear you know to pretend we're all good even though we have all this gunk covering up our self-esteem so what she does like how we're gonna get way more self-esteem in this situation because you see the layers. And then one of the ladies is like, well, you just pour in more of the positive, you know, affirmation, or, you know, positive affirmations, positive characteristics. So that's the real Coke. And you pour it in and then all the other gunk and glitter it just goes. And all you're left with is the, the high self-esteem, those positive characteristics. So that's why you got to keep feeding yourself, keep feeding your mind, keep talking to yourself with the positive things. Because so many people, they go, oh, they're imaginative, Crystal said. <laughs> Uh, so many people let their mind go to what they're not doing right or how they're they, they're not doing it. They try, you know, they failed. And really there's no failure. There's only feedback. So, you know, people just are so hard on themselves with all these, you know, taking other people's opinions, taking on their beliefs, the negative beliefs of them. So it's, you know, you just got to keep feeding that positive, positive, positive um, characteristics because our words and our thoughts give off a vibration. And then that's where like that law of attraction. So Lisa Nichols is on the secret. If you know Lisa Nichols. Um, I, yeah, I saw her back then and I couldn't, you guys, this is a dream come true. I couldn't even believe she's sitting there hugging on me in the Bahamas in this gorgeous paradise. Like, like, oh my God, <laughs> like how freaking amazing is that? Okay. So that was the self-esteem exercise. That was day two. Um, and then, yeah, so she was saying that your breakthrough comes when you do the action. So, so many times, you know, we're consuming information all the time, but we're not taking action on what we know. And so, hey, <laughs> uh, she, what is it? she she and a stylist hello hello so you got it the action so there's law of attraction but action action is the key to making it all happen and i mean if you don't really want to make anything happen and you know if you don't have goals you want to achieve and you just want to be peace of mind zen you could just you know sit in nature and just you just be and that's it but if you have goals you want to accomplish in life and for me like it was i had this interesting conversation this morning with um alex the lady on my call and we were saying Okay, with spirituality and living in the material world, it's like you're not supposed to want these materialistic things, right? But then if you do, then you're like, feel guilty about it. But for me, we were saying, like, you know, as long as you're not making it like an idol, these material things, you're basically, you're not attached to it where you're like, this is my happiness, but I don't have this material thing, I'm not happy. Like, you know the truth and you're just having fun in this dream world, <laughs> my dreamer shirt on, um, you just have fun, you get to create, and you're not, you're not, like, letting your peace of mind sway because of some material things, but why not have it all, you know, like, I want to have the best of everything I can all the time, because why not, it's possible, um, so anyways, but you got to do the action, so the law of attraction, you got to do the action, and a lot of the action is the mindset work, a lot of the action is the energetics, getting into the vibration of your wish fulfilled already, you know, having that clear picture, feeling it, it says I have poor connection. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so yeah, so action, basically. Not a little tangents because you got to get in action. Ooh, and I liked this. It says protect 
your future memories. So what memories do you want to have in the future? And protect them now by doing the action, right? Because uh, we can, you know, like whatever life you want to create, it's there. It's all there for you. And so I was also listening to Neville Goodard the other day. I found this really good YouTube channel. And so he talks about like the behind the scenes with Neville Goodard because his grandpa was like part of his like secret inner circle. Not really secret, but part of inner, inner circle that he had. So there's all these things about like climbing the ladder and you're like visualizing and visualizing and you're saying it and you're saying it. And the craziest thing with this exercise, so basically you go to sleep and you would climb this ladder. And so as you're, you're drifting off to sleep, you're imagining yourself 10 minutes, just like climbing a ladder, climbing a ladder. But then you tell yourself throughout the day, I'm not going to climb a ladder. Wherever I do, I'm not going to climb a ladder. It sounds kind of crazy, right? But they're like, you do this for a week and then somehow, some way, you're going to climb a ladder. And so it's like, you're going to tell yourself no, but then it's like, you get a call from the neighbor, like, hey, can you come here and like, get that for me up there? Like, it's just, it's just so crazy. And I believe that that's kind of a law of attraction. So whether you think you can, you think you can't, you're right, you're attracting it. So that's why it's so important where you're not, like even Bob Proctor, one of my mentors too, he says, don't think about debt because you're going to amplify debt. Like whatever you focus on grows. So if you're like, oh, debt, 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 then you're just going to be focused on debt. Then instead of focusing on the opportunities and all the amazing things around you and, you know, ways you can get money, you're going to be focused on debt. So you're like, let me say, save money here. Let me penny pinch here. Let me, you know, double check that I'm not like overdrafting, whatever. You know, it's like you're, you're spending your time on what you're thinking about. If you're thinking about debt, then you're going to get more debt. So yeah, this is just a crazy exercise where they were saying manifestation is so real, right? <laughs> um, so, oh my God, it was just so good. So yeah, so protect your future memories. Uh, really good. And then we did this, this carefrontation. So I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon. It's been so amazing hanging out with y'all, but I'm getting towards the end anyways. But if any of these topics were interesting, hey, Amber, if any of these topics were interesting for you, then let me know and I can definitely deep dive. And if you're just tuning in, definitely catch the replay. But yeah, so this was on, I think, day two. <laughs> this was on day two. And this was crazy. So carefrontation communication. Ah, I love that you're here. Thank you. Um, so this carefrontation is communication is different because you're not talking to someone where it's like, you didn't do this and, you know, it's like down, down, down. So she's saying like, you know, this is where you start. And a lot of people, they just go down like, oh, I, I wish you would do this or I wanted you to do this. So she's saying go back up <laughs> and, and and then speak from a high point where you're like, you know, oh, what I love is this or, you know, like, yeah, I, don't, I have I have the actual worksheet. So I'll have to bring that up and do this again because that was powerful. Um, so that's like communication. So going up. So speaking up instead of going down, which when you're looking at me you're like now you're probably like, what are you talking about? But I'll, I'll break it down a little bit because that one's a powerful way. So basically, um, yeah, just taking responsibility for what you need and what you want and how you say it. Okay. And then, uh, okay, so now these are just exercises. The last couple of days, we just did deep healing exercises. And Lisa Nichols is so like strong to take on all this energy of everybody's problems. Cause basically we're just laying our problems on them and she's retelling the story and just come, just so empowered by it. But we did this parents exercise where you're, you're like, what did they not do that you needed? Um, and so, yeah, like you guys probably know the story if you've been following, but if not, like when I was younger, I was bullied by my stepsisters. My mom was in rehab at the time. My dad was kind of working around the clock to give us this good life. And then I was there with my stepsisters, my evil stepsister, evil stepmom, and I was just treated like Cinderella. So I, yeah, I went to my dad and I was like, help me with this situation. And he's so busy and worked all the time. He's like, oh, talk to your stepmom. And she didn't care. So yeah, so I, my question to my dad was, you know, why weren't you there in that moment? And so everyone had their questions that they were saying and like, it was just so powerful and so beautiful. And then, so she retold the story you guys are so funny. So Amber, you just tagged Crystal on Instagram and then Crystal's on Facebook and she's tagging you. <laughs> you guys are both watching. I love you. Um, so they're doing this thing. And so she is like, I'm going to, you know, speak truth from spirit to you about the situation. Um, so she was like, when you, you know, when you see me, see your parent or see, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're talking about parents, so see your parent, parent figure. And so then she comes from a space of truth where, like I was doing the best I could with what I knew. So that goes back to the other example that I was saying when you were talking about the 64 ounce and the 24 ounce, where it's like, that was 100% for me, but that container I had was 24%. So if you're like self, you know, like you're giving container, you're 
um, you know, like you only can, if you don't know better, then you don't know better. So it's like they're giving all they got, but all they got, what maybe wasn't all you needed at the time. So anyway, so she was coming from this place and it was just so powerful. So that was the parents exercise. That was day three. That was basically all day because we did different relationships. And then um, day four, we did this ancestor. Oh, it was so beautiful. So it was saying, we are our ancestors' wildest dream. So like what we're living in now is like our ancestors' wildest dream. And it was like really, really touching. It was really touching. Um, so we had this picture of this girl kissing her grandma. Um, yeah, and then we just get to say all the things that we want to thank them for. So basically like, thank you for going through all that you went through to you know, bring me here. And then it's like, what are you going to do to like make them proud? And like all these things. Oh, so cute. I'm just like, I'm like getting right back in it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm like getting emotional. Um, so it was just so good. So, um, yeah, it was just a lot about healing because you know, when you're healed and you help people heal. So that was really good. Another formula. This is probably the last thing I'm going to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. So there is the ERO formula. So basically uh, there's an event that happens. So there's an event and then there's your response to it. And that's really the outcome of how you've seen it. Isn't that powerful, Amber? Oh my God. I was like, ah. it was, it was deep, deep, like getting into like, wow. You know, then it's like all the little details about all the little things. It doesn't even matter because you're like, you know, looking at the big picture in the grand scheme of things and where you are compared to like, you know, like what it took everyone to get here. It's just like, dang. Um, so anyways, this ERO formula, basically there's an event that happens, then there's your response to it. And then there's the outcome of you know how you sum up the event hi laker <laughs> laker hook too um so basically we change your response to the um event and then the outcome will change for you so yeah letting go of control so you can really heal and then we had a business day the rest of that day and she just just like three hours just answering questions answering questions because you know she's out there doing her thing so maybe i'll um, share about that on another live hi <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Um, so basically, yeah, she's just saying on day five, tell the universe who you want to be. Put it out there. Protect the future memories of yourself by getting into action now. Because all we have is now. Past is gone. Future's not here yet. The only thing you can control is the now moment. Um, so yeah, so yeah, be the change you want to see in the world. So that's kind of where I'll leave it off. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is like a longer live than I usually do. Ah, Crystal. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I'm a little bit late dealing with this, like, flea situation at my house. <laughs> and, yeah, but um, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And anything you want me to deep dive in or that caught your eye, I'd love to hear your feedback. And, yeah, Colorado pound cake. Um, all right, love you guys. Take care. Have a great night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. <laughs> Bye.